This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Monday, the 7th day of December in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. The governments of Suriname and Guyana have decided to postpone this week's planned reopening of the ferry service between the two neighboring countries. The move comes in the wake of more than 600 Cuban nationals camping out at a ferry terminal in Suriname, planning to travel over to Guyana. The number of Cubans camping out at the site has been growing steadily, and authorities in Suriname estimated that the number of Cubans waiting to cross over to Guyana could reach over 1,000 in days. Minister of Works Juan Egil, who met with Surinamese officials today, told reporters that the situation is being closely monitored and addressed at a diplomatic level. He noted the government's concerns about the large number of Cubans waiting to cross over into Guyana. Diplomatic level that is being handled, and as soon as the issue of the congregating and a determination of what will take place with the Cubans that are at the South Drain on the Suriname side, as soon as that has been resolved, we are ready. As a matter of fact, the directors of both the Kanawaima Ferry Inc. and the Kanawaima Management Committee will be meeting on Friday in Guyana and in Suriname. Minister Edgel also said Guyana and Suriname are both working closely to have the issue resolved and the United Nations is also involved in the matter. That is being handled at the level of our foreign ministers engaging all the parties concerned and my understanding is that there is excellent collaboration. The United Nations is also involved, and that is going very well. Guyana and Suriname agreed to reopen the ferry service during President Irfan Ali's official visit to Suriname two weeks ago. Days after the announcement, a large number of Cubans who were living in Suriname started to gather at a terminal in Suriname, transforming the area into a tent city. Hundreds of tents were set up by the Cubans, who, according to reports out of Suriname, said they wanted to come to Guyana to eventually make their way to the U.S. The situation became worrying the government officials in both Guyana and Suriname, and the U.S. Embassy in Guyana also started to pay attention to the development. The U.S. Embassy in Guyana serves as the immigration point and visa appointment center for Cuban nationals in the region. More news coming up in a moment. Guyana, we've been through it all. But as a people, we have weathered every storm and risen to every challenge. Because it is the people of Guyana that gives it its strength. All the people, regardless of race, class, or religion, we, we are, are one, one people, people, one strength. And now is our time. A time to rise. Together, we rise. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Ravinas and Water Street and Anans and Regent Street just received a new shipment of Lederet in over 16 colors. Lederet can be used in a wide variety of applications including covering speedboat seats, cargo, and keeping commuters dry. Ideal for minibus and car seats, Lederet can be custom made to your seating requirements. Lederet is easy to clean and sanitize and a better choice during the COVID pandemic. For fast and comfortable shopping, visit us to get the best prices in town. Ravinas and Water Street and Anans and Regent Street. Mom, what are you doing with GPL on your list? Child, you forgot I have to pay GPL. You got time with GPL. I have to keep these lights on. The customers who think in that manner and refuse to honor their obligation to GPL are obviously not playing their part in ensuring quality service delivery. So, I will continue to pay my GPL bill on time, every time. I recognize the value of your point, Mom. You were right.
many wishes for Christmas. A freshly painted home, a new vacation home, a new car, home furnishings, my dream wedding, new kitchen appliances, a new smart TV, a new phone for Zion, school fees too. Gosh, I still want this work from home office area. I just wish I could get some extra cash to clear my debts altogether. Do you feel the same? GBTI is granting 12 wishes for Christmas. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Saul Guyana Inc. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Saul Guyana Inc. Municipal News to report right now, Georgetown Mayor Ubrajna Ryan and his deputy Alfred Munro were returned to the two positions unopposed today as the city council held its internal elections. The mayor once again called on the government of Guyana to stop playing politics with matters related to the city council. He has accused the new PP civic government of undermining the work of the APNU-led municipality. Just after his re-election today, Mayor Narine said it is time for the central government and the municipality to get on with the work of the city. Well, that's why I said I'm willing to work along with government, stop playing politics, let us get on with the business of the city and the people's life are very important in this crucial time, global pandemic, you know, what we're facing. The mayor also said that he has written to the government on several occasions in his efforts to work along with them, but there has been no response. Government need to work with us. We extend our arms to government. We wanted to reach with the minister. We met two times, but it seems it's few games, and I'm not ready for games. I will stand very firm as mayor to represent this city, and I will do so without fear or favor. The minister need to get a grip of himself. I need to come forward and let us have discussion and projects and how it Local Government Minister Nigel Darmalal believes that City Hall needs a serious overhaul and an audit in order for central government to facilitate any funds being allocated to the council as a bailout. He has accused the municipality of misusing funds in the past. Mayor Narine has said he would welcome any audit. Mr. Darmalal said he wants an audit to happen at City Hall. I welcome it. I said it many times. Bring on the audit. We're ready for it. I don't know what happened. The mayor once again called on business owners and citizens of the city to pay up their property taxes so that the council could be in a position to address the many issues facing the city. The city mayor also enjoys the support of many vendors. Some of them gathered outside the compound of City Hall today to show their support during the elections. Let's tell you now that opposition leader Joe Harmon has turned down a request for a farewell meeting with outgoing Canadian High Commissioner Lillian Chatterjee. In response to Ms. Chatterjee's request to meet with the opposition leader, Mr. Harmon informed her that he would not be able to meet due to urgent political commitments on the day that she wanted to meet. The opposition leader said he hopes Ms. Chatterjee's tour of duty in Barbados will be fruitful. He also informed the Canadian High Commissioner that during her tenure in Guyana, there was concern about the role the Canadian High Commission played in facilitating the departure of Charandas Prasad the morning after he voted against his own government in that no-confidence motion. The former Member of Parliament, Charandas Prasad, who is a Canadian citizen, sought diplomatic cover from the Canadian High Commission after his vote. Chatterjee was not in Guyana at the time, but she said that she was made aware of the situation. Harmon said there was also concern about breaches of diplomatic protocol by the High Commissioner during the electoral counting of votes in the March 2020 elections. Chatterjee had been accused of rushing into a meeting of the Elections Commission and demanding that the GCOM chair addresses a loud protest that was taking place by officials of the PPP. She has denied multiple times that she ever barged into any GCOM meeting. The Canadian High Commissioner had also come under criticism from supporters of the coalition after she described the supporters' move to the court as frivolous. She has never backed down from that statement and told news source back in May that she still thinks it was a frivolous move. Chatterjee and other Western diplomats were outspoken in their calls for the March 2020 election results to be accepted. She has repeatedly said that her statements mirrored the statements of her government back in Canada. Mr. Harmon, in his letter to the outgoing High Commissioner, said he expects the good relations between Canada and Guyana to continue, adding that he looks forward to meeting with the new Canadian High Commissioner to Guyana. 
Less than a week after retired Chief of Staff of the Guyana Defense Force, Gary Bass was set free on a causing death by dangerous driving charge. The Director of Public Prosecutions has moved to appeal the decision at the Magistrate's Court. In a notice of appeal, the DPP is seeking to have the decision by Magistrate Rondell Weaver set aside. The DPP's decision follows a request by the father of the victim, Jude Bentley Sr., who has objected to the decision handed down by the Magistrate's Court. He visited the DPP's office this morning to make his objection known and requested an appeal be filed. Last week, the magistrate upheld a no-case submission put forward by the attorneys for Mr. Best, ruling that the prosecution had failed to establish its case that Best caused the death of national cyclist Jude Bentley by dangerous driving. There was no witness to the accident, and the prosecution during the magistrate's court case did not dispute the testimony of the former chief of staff and PNC reform executive member. Just after the accident, the police force had issued a statement indicating that Mr. Bass was found to be above the legal limit for alcohol while operating a vehicle. However, during the magistrate's court case, the police admitted that a breathalyzer kit used to test the accused had not been calibrated in more than a year, when it should be calibrated every six months. A full decision of the magistrate has not been made public. The February accident led to protests by some friends of the national cyclist, who demanded justice over the accident. Bentley was on an early morning practice ride when the accident took place along the Clive Lloyd Road. The coronavirus pandemic in Guyana has claimed 154 lives. The Ministry of Health has announced the death of a 34-year-old woman from Region 4. The brief statement from the ministry said she passed away in a medical institution. This is the third death recorded for the month. On Sunday, the Ministry of Health reported the deaths of two men. One of the men was from Region 1 while the other was from Region 7. The month of October remains the deadliest month for the pandemic in Guyana. A total of 44 deaths were recorded in October. Since the first case of the pandemic was recorded in Guyana back in March, more than 5,000 cases have been recorded. There are currently more than 700 active cases. Over 4,000 persons have made full recoveries. The Guyana Power & Light Company has rehired one of its former chief executive officers to the top job in the company. After placing ads in search of a new chief executive officer, a decision was made by the board of GPL to rehire Bharat Dindial to serve in the post. He previously served in the post between 2006 and 2015. Dindial was relieved of the job in 2015. His contract had actually expired in 2014, and the new board at the time found no evidence of the contract ever being renewed. Under the previous PPP Civic Government, the GPL board, which was headed by Winston Brasington at the time, had completed a blistering assessment of Dindial's performance as Chief Executive Officer, pointing to his lack of management skills, poor performance on the job, disrespect for the board, and bad management. His contract was not renewed following the board's report, but the government at the time kept him on the job without a new contract. In 2015, he was officially relieved of his duties under the new coalition government. Just after the government changed again in August this year, the new PP civic government rehired Dindial as a management consultant. This was in October. A search was then launched for a new chief executive officer after the incumbent at the time, Jamaican Albert Gordon, indicated that he was not seeking a contract renewal. There were four persons who were interviewed for the top job at GPL, but staff members were informed today through a company email that Mr. Dindial had landed the job to return as the new CEO. Dindial started his second stint as CEO this morning. An internet outage across the Caribbean today trickled down to Guyana for a few hours following damage to a subsea cable. But customers of GTT were hardly affected, and the company in a statement said that was as a result of the company having a system in place to deal with such instances. Public Relations Manager Jasmine Harris said due to GTT's significant investments in building the maximum resiliency available to serve its customers, no widespread outage took place. GDT customers did not experience any outage, she noted. However, eNetworks customers were left offline for more than an hour, but the company was able to get the service back up through a backup arrangement, it stated in a release. Across the Region is coming up next.
Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Due to the impacts of the global pandemic, COVID-19 across our nation, essential organizations like us have chosen to adopt innovative approaches to meet the emerging needs of our customers while protecting our employees. Here are some quick tips to make managing your GPL bill easier while we practice social distancing. To register for electronic billing, you can use the e-billing tab on your website. To access your bill balance, you can use four options, the website live chat at gpl.net, the online inquiry on our website under billing, SMS freedom by texting your GPL reference number to 624-0400 or 608-8400 or call our call center at 226-2600. A message from the Guyana Power and Light Incorporated. I have many wishes for Christmas. A freshly painted home, a new vacation home, a new car, home furnishings, my dream wedding, new kitchen appliances, a new smart TV, a new phone for Zion, school fees too. Gosh, I still want this work from home office area. I just wish I could get some extra cash to clear my debts altogether. Do you feel the same? GBTI is granting 12 wishes for Christmas. The Christmas season is here once again, and we encourage everybody to be safe. Between October 23rd and December 31st, buy your groceries and fuel from Falls, and you can win a Christmas hamper every week or your fuel purchase free. Just spend $3,000, complete the coupon, drop it in the box, and then listen for your name. And to make it even better, you can win a bumper hamper on Christmas Eve day. Yes, our prices are great, the environment is safe, and everyone wins when you shop in the Falls Christmas promotion, Land of Canaan. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. But as a people, we have weathered every storm and risen to every challenge because it is the people of Guyana that gives it its strength. All the people, regardless of race, class, or religion, we, we are, are all people, people with one strength. strength. And now is our time a time to rise. Together, we rise. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Across the region right now, President Nicolas Maduro's party and allies have won in Venezuela's legislative elections, boycotted by the main opposition parties. With over 80% of ballots counted, his coalition had 67.6% .6 of the vote, the National Electoral Council said. The victory means that Mr. Maduro now has total control of the country's political institutions. The boycott is being led by opposition leader Juan Guaido, who has been in a two-year power struggle with Maduro. An opposition bloc which broke the boycott and took part received 18% of the vote and turned out was 31%, the National Electoral Council said. The National Assembly, the only institution controlled by the opposition, will now be dominated by Mr. Maduro's party and others backing him. 
Broadband internet customers in several Caribbean countries experienced problems today after their providers informed of a possible fiber fault between Antigua and the French island of Guadeloupe. One company said that it was experiencing some major problems and outage. Cable & Wireless, which operates in the Caribbean as Flo, said that it could take several days to resolve the situation. Some providers have turned to a backup system. There were broadband internet problems in several countries, including Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Barbados. Finally tonight, international news. Most parts of the U.S. state of California are under a strict new lockdown as COVID-19 continues to surge across the U.S. The stay-at-home order affects around 85% of the state's 40 million people. It will be in place for at least three weeks and covers the Christmas holidays. Many businesses will be closed and people will be banned from meeting anyone outside their household. On Sunday, the U.S. had a record number of people in hospital with COVID-19. The country has seen a sharp rise in cases and COVID-related deaths in recent weeks, a surge that could be due to last month's Thanksgiving holiday, when millions of Americans traveled around the U.S. despite warnings. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting.